Hey and welcome back to Toby's Rescue to Toby. That's me. In today's video, we'll do a final video about this little friend, the Red Audio 100 amp hour 12 volt battery mini. This lithium iron phosphate battery has done a great job already. I have uh, used it a couple of weeks a month already and it's great. I love it. I love the size about it. I mean, you have seen probably a couple of videos already out there. And this video will focus on this battery. I've used it already a couple of months. I want to see does it still has the same capacity? So this is not one of those typical videos where you get the battery brand new, tested, does it actually have the capacity you bought it with? No, this one will focus on, is the battery still capable of pushing or pulling, whatever you want to call it, 100 amp hours out of those cells? In this case, it should be pouch cells, as we all know. That's what our video is about. And also I want to show you how I used it in this car. Uh, in the Jeep Wrangler. I was able to connect it different ways. I used it with the Lucidi battery box up there. I did also use it just with a, you know, easy setup like up there as well. But I also used it with the Red Audio um, DC outlet. You can find it there as well. Pretty simple setup. You don't need a lot of experience with that, but you can store it and then you can fold on the seats. You can sleep in the car. You can put your stuff in the car and I think that's a huge win with this size battery and it's still 100 amp hours, which is amazing. So I read somewhere it's 35%, I think around that, less size than a regular size battery. Let me show you how possibly you can put it in the car and connections, obviously all this wiring is secondary, but I wanna show you how you could possibly put it in and still use your trunk or your cargo space in the car. So you can lay it flat, you can lay it on the side, however you need it and whatever fits the best for your cargo space. Such an orientation, maybe it fits the best like this or even like that, it fits right underneath the driver's seat, depending on your clearance, obviously. It's just hiding there, underneath, all the way folded on seat. Could you imagine having two of those batteries under each of those seats, right and left, passenger and driver's side? Perfect, and then folding on all your rear seat and you still have space to store all the other electricity here at the front. That's how compact this battery is. And that's how versatile and flexible this battery is. Well, not to mention, whoop, the product manual. By the way, I did not talk about this one as of now, but in this manual, which is really detailed and really well made, I feel like, you can find a lot of information what you need about your battery. Obviously safety. You will find all the information what you should do first opening up this battery. Of course, content. What I like a lot is the battery pack parameters, which you can find here, which you might need for setting up MPPT or anything else you have and you need to manually enter all the information for your battery. That's where you can find them. That's also where you found max continuous charge current and discharge current 100 amp. And up to five seconds, we can go up to 250 amp with this insane small battery. And again, here the dimension, and those are very important, very important, very small, and of course, uh, protection. And the temperature range, as always. Also great to know here, charging, discharging, uh, controller settings, stuff like that is great. Um, understanding also here, um, recommended charging current to give your battery the capability to live very long. This is a pretty cool page, which I think series and parallel connection, which explains exactly what a series and parallel connection is and how you can connect batteries and you can do a 4S or 4P connection. Um, according here, up there. Pretty cool. So yeah, this is the test setup, quite simple. Battery is fully charged. That's what it says at least. So I connected everything. I have the inverter here, which should be around a 0.2C test. Probably a little higher than that, but uh, we'll give it a try and see how long and how much capacity we still get out of this battery after using it a couple months. As mentioned, this is not a typical capacity test as soon as you receive a new battery and see is the capacity really 100 amps. This is seeing how much did the battery maybe or maybe not degrade or maybe not as mentioned. So this would be cool. I just want to do this in quotes real life test more. So we'll start from here and I'll show you the results afterwards. I think it's probably the best because this is just boring. So. Let me start and see if we can get the 0.2C test. Okay, here we are. Right now we're pulling 25 amp, which is a little bit more than 0.2C. Let's see how much we can get off the battery. So I'll see you later.
and it is back. Just give it a little more juice to get it back. 103. 103 amp hours, that's the total we pulled. Let's go ahead and see how the cells look inside. If they actually look the same like we saw in many other videos already or not, and we'll go from there. Okay, here we have it. And now we'll open it up. And that's usually a matter of seconds to open. For you at least, for me it doesn't, but... Yep, there it is. It. Oh, there it is. Here we have the entire battery. Oh, wow. Well, here we have the teardown of the battery. I did take off the lid. Um, by the way, if I didn't mention it so far, but Red Audio delivers also those nice caps here on top of the negative and the positive terminal, which is really nice. Um, I think two sets of those and also two sets of the bolts, washer and spring washer down here. So that's pretty nice. Here in the box, really nice that it just slid out. I like that, but nothing was loose. Nothing was wiggling around. They have those hard styrofoam um, packs in there, which, which prevents it from moving. And then we see everything here, which is the BMS on this side, as you can imagine. That's the model S12100 BMS from Red Audio, it looks like. 4S lithium-ion phosphate battery BMS, charge discharge 100 amp. And then we have the negative wires, which are two, and they crimp together. Are oh, they crimped together? Yes, they crimp together to the terminal here. They have a protective sleeve. Then we do have the positive wire over here, which is also with a zip tie, uh, zip tie to the side. So this one goes to the terminal. And then we have here on this side, the, the 40 BMS itself, it looks like um, some kind of bracket, which looks pretty nice, to be honest. And then we do have the balance sleeves over here. There we are, so here are the balance sleeves. Looks like here you can see all those pouch cells. They are compressed here with this rod. And then we have separate tape here. I do not know why there's separate tape. But they have this blue shrink tape as well. And what else do we have here in the BMS? Maybe we have to take it off. As so you can see, I think there are some temperature sensors, which I'm wondering. Let me try and get you closer on this whole thing. So I took out from the positive side the bolts. I did take out those two big bolts. I took out one, two, three bolts up here and one here. So now I can lift up the BMS. You can see here are on this corner. Then we have here underneath the balance leaves come in and then we have it looks like one. This is one pack, two, three, four. As much as I can see and Quite interesting how they wired it up and they used just soldering up here. This is just soldered on those balance leaves, so that's fine. And this is the entire bracket and then we could take off the bracket at one point. But I do not want to pull it here. I think it's far enough. I pulled already this overheating switch, which was here tucked in underneath this plaque and this other tape. There's not a lot of extraction and uh, compression happening here, I feel like, because they used those steel rods and also steel brackets up here to compress everything tight together. I feel like there's not a lot. Let me know if you know, um, is this something which is normal to pouch cells? Okay, we charging. Let's see if this high temperature cutoff works. Leading it up here. Nope, oh, and there it is. Just turned off. Let me cool it down really quick, otherwise it takes forever. There we are. You can tell there's a click happening in here. And there's the second one which is underneath here. I'm pretty sure this is also high temperature. So, and usually they are just for high temperature. So even if we try it, it should not trigger at all. It was also not advertised as low temperature, so that's not a big deal. Before putting everything together, I think this one is a six gauge wire. And here we have two eight gauge wires on the negative side. 
which are crimped together and then going into the bolt here on the terminal. The crimp seems to be hydraulic here as much as I was able to see. So it feels like it's a very solid material what they used here. Same applies here to this terminal, which seems to be pretty thick, and really nice. Oh, I like that one. So, but I think this one must be six because they are eight already and this is bigger, so. I didn't see any, any labeling here on here. All right, let's summarize this. This battery, I had it now for probably two to three months and I was using it not only for camping, overlanding, having it in the car, charging with solar, charging with a DC to DC charger from the car, which also had 40 amps charging power, so that's pretty nice. And also normal charging as well as for capacity tests, um, charging from this battery to another battery. I did all those kind of things, which really worked well. And now the capacity test I did for this video, it passed it more than 100 amp hour, still available. I mean, it's, it's not at all, so it should really have that. Um, the life cycle is way, way more expected for this battery, um, especially when you use it with uh, the 0.2C charging in this charging, which is around 20 amps here for this battery. Uh, I really like this form factor, which is amazing. So this battery is performing pretty well. I've saw a couple other batteries like this size um, out there. So I'm wondering what the build quality of those ones are. So you have seen how this one uh, is built so in the teardown. So I feel like not too bad. Everything looked good inside. I liked it. And of course, when you want to have some smart functionality, smart BMS or anything like that, you would pay extra, but I haven't seen this for this mini batteries yet. Hopefully they're coming out pretty soon. It would be amazing as well as a low temp cutoff. Um, of course, you know, you always want to have more. But um, for this mini, amazing. You can use it so flexible and versatile for different things, which I really enjoyed and really enjoy and I can highly recommend. So this is, this is really a good product, I feel like, and I enjoyed it a lot. Even though the BMS is most likely renamed or labeled, um, I didn't, didn't look at that specifically. But so far, it worked well. I liked it. Please feel free to like those videos if you want to see more stuff like that. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like that as well coming up pretty soon. And thanks for watching. Cheers! Thank you.